Hi everyone, so I've rescued my old Sinclair ZX Spectrum 48K from the attic and um, I thought I'd give it a try to see if it still works. Um, I haven't plugged this machine in for a very long time, um, maybe as much as 10 years ago since the last time I powered it up, so it's just been stuck in the attic for all of that time. And I'm a little bit um, worried about that because the attic has um, lots of temperature changes, especially in the summer, it can get quite hot during the day and then quite cold during the night so that doesn't tend to do um, the electronics very much good so um, we'll give it a go though and we'll see what goes on okay so I've got it all set up and um, we've just got power going into there that's just a 9 volts DC adapter um, an audio mono cable uh, that I made up especially for this um, and another mono cable that goes off just to give you the sound output and here we have, this is actually, I think this is an, a standard RCA socket. It's certainly an RCA connector that I've plugged in there. Um, but it's actually a um, an RF video out. So what's going to happen is um, we're going to need to tune it in. That's why we can't see anything on the screen yet. So I'll give that a go now and then we should find out whether it's worked after all this time. Menu, there we go. Manual tune, I think. Now, I think, if I can remember, I think it's around halfway around the band somewhere, so it could be quite close actually. Oh, that's looking good. Let me just get rid of the, the graphics on there. Yeah, that's it, excellent. So even after all this time stuck in the attics, works first time. Brilliant. 1982 Sinclair Research. Fantastic. So I guess the next thing is to try and see if it'll load anything. So I've got this uh, this old game down with me. Um, it's just a computer scrabble. And I've put this into this very old tape player. This is actually the only tape player I've got left in the entire house anymore. So um, again, this tape player has been just stuck in the attic as well. So it's very possible that that won't work. Um, but right, let's give it a go, if I can remember what to do, uh, load, and uh, just two quotes I need, where's the quote button, ah, I've got it. So all I've done is, uh, done, excuse me, uh, typed load and two quotes on the screen, and then when I press enter, um, you get the familiar um, colour bars around the border, that's just waiting for me to do something with the tape now. So I guess we just press play and hope for the best. It's looking good. Fantastic, that seems to be working straight away, first time. You can't fault that really, can you? I mean, this machine is um, about 30 years old now, so I don't think you'd, um, you'd fire up a modern 30-year-old, a modern laptop in 30 years' time and expect that to work. I know it's a bit more complex, but um, I think that is pretty amazing that that just works first time after being stuck in the attic for so long. I guess I'll leave this running and see if it loads the whole program. I think it, they take quite a while though. Maybe up to five minutes to load. I'll probably fast forward it for you guys so you don't have to wait. These, um, these Spectrum computers are quite amazing to look at and considering this was back at a time when home computers were really quite new um, it's quite a cute little design, even by today's standards that looks quite small so um, this was really the first computer or the first range of computers that brought computing into the home and encouraged uh, the young generation of that time to, to learn to program so that's certainly what I learned to program on as well and while we're on the subject actually, this um, video output here, there is a, an old mod you can do to these where you just 
uh, bypass the RF uh, circuit inside because all that's happening here is you get the machine generates composite video and then that gets um, modulated um, in the RF um, oscillator in here and then it goes down the cable and just gets demodulated at the other end and you end up with composite video again so I mean back when these machines were built first um, most televisions didn't have composite video inputs on them so it was ideal to do it this way um, but now with modern televisions they've all got composite inputs so this is kind of wasteful and probably leads to um, imperfections in the, the quality of the, the video you see there so I might have a go at that later see if I can um, link it out There it is. If your television is colour, press C. Black and white, press B. I guess black and white TVs are still around then, but we've got a colour one, so we'll press C. Uh, no. Total number of players. Uh, that'll be two, I think, including the computer. Um, yes, I'll say yes to that.